Hi everyone, Stevie High from Highland Train Studios. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a, uh, I guess a little high how-to slash tutorial type deal. Show you how I do some of this detail uh, and uh, different things, kind of like that that I did for my sci-fi, the metal, metal, metal plates that I, you know, have for the base. This is the detail, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna show you how I used to do that, and how I do it now. And maybe you'll appreciate the detail after you see how I do it now, because it's very tedious. And uh, I'm also going to uh, show you how I make other a little couple other things. Um, the railing to the sci-fi. Oh. The, more of a border around the outsides of it. It's not really a railing because it's not very high. You know. And I'm going to show a little how-to on how I made my dungeon. People have asked me that. That was one of the first things I ever made. One of my early videos was basically just showing what I the completed project of it um, when I was new to YouTube and new to terrain. And uh, it wasn't modular by by any any means at all, but uh, yeah. So let's get to it first. Here's a scrap piece. What I do here is this eighth of an inch thick pink foam board. Uh, starts off as a ha uh, half an inch, which really is nine sixteenths. It's a sixteenth bigger than a half an inch, but they call it half inch. Set my bandsaw up. And I run through it, you know, if you have a bandsaw, it's, you know, it's hard. If you don't, you can't really do this. But you do, you set up your, your you know, whatever it's called, the bridge. And you run, run them through there, and you get long strips of these, and I cut them down to whatever I need them. Here's a scrap piece. Um, where's my exacto? Here we go. Um, but first, I'm going to show you how I made uh, my little... Metal plates that go on the sides of the pyramids, pyramid-like type structures. Uh, let me just I need a somewhat straight edge piece. Okay, I got a little piece like this. You know, I got certain dimensions that I use for them, but this will do for these purposes. I normally measure everything out, having the top part, the top of it a little shorter than the bottom. But this pur purpose, I'm going to just freehand cut this stuff. So, okay. So you get that sh that shape. Next, you gotta be very careful you don't cut yourself. Um, right down the center of it, I'll cut in about an eighth of an inch deep into it around the top side of it and and the two sides like so then I'll come in about an eighth of an inch on, on what is going to be the front of it A lot of these techniques I, I taught myself while building that, that foam tank. Uh, and by just grabbing pieces of foam, scrap foam, and just carving stuff. And I'll just take chunks out until I get some crazy looking thing. You know. Okay. There you go. There you go. I don't know if that's focusing or whatnot, but autofocus, whatever. Uh, you got the, the 3D dimensions to the plate. It's kind of flimsy right now, but once you glue it to the, the main building, it's basically a solid thing again because it's part of that main building. Paints up really nice. Uh, it's got this texture here from the bandsaw. If you don't like that, get some uh, 3, 350 uh, grade sandpaper, sand that down, it'll be it's smooth for you but that texture is really good for uh, bricks and such and stone like and also I like to use my 100 grade sandpaper to go over like when I make bricks and, and such 
and it'll give you a little texture there too. So there's that. Okay, now we'll go back to this little piece here, and uh, I'm going to just cut this in half to show you. Okay, we'll use this piece to demonstrate how I used to freehand this type of detail. Okay, say I just want to, let me just, whoops, I, see what I just did there? I cut all the way through. <laughs> I did not want to cut all the way through. All right. Here we just lightly go into it cutting. Okay. And I would freehand my The circles like so. Okay, just just to give you a, an idea. Then you run your pen through it like so. Okay, there you go. Old style. Eh, it looks good for you know its purpose. You know. But these are crisper, thicker lines, better circles. And how you get that is with a, a ruler and a circle template. Yay for the win, templates and rulers. Yay. Who would have thought, right? Okay, for this way of doing it now, I no longer use my knife. Don't use it. Stay away from it. Instead, I use this 0.5 lead pencil. I have it sticking out quite a ways, enough to, to puncture this really good. And uh, I'll make that same design that I made on this, this, this scrap piece, I guess, um, using this. And this technique, I like to call it the tattooing technique, where this is, I stay on the, the edge here as good as I can. And it takes just a little bit longer to do this technique. But once it's completed, you'll see that it's, I mean, if, if you're really into anal, into anal detail. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I said anal detail. It doesn't make any sense. But, I mean, if, if you're anal about detail and you like things to look top-notch, Go this route. Okay. Okay, grab that circle template. That circle do I want? Ah, let's just throw this one on there for giggles. Okay, there you go. And then I still do the pen thing. It cleans it up when you run the pen through there, and it leaves you a nicer line, a nicer. Piece. I guess you call it a growl line or whatever. There you go. Ruler, trickle template. I mean, freehand, knife, pen. I think this looks a lot better than this. So, imagine I can still use the ruler for this, but it still doesn't come out as, as clean as this. This, is, this looks sharp, really sharp. Okay, uh, let me see here. I guess that's that's it for the. So I mean, then you can get boards that look like that, you know. So.
which you you will you know you can get these kind of designs you can put in there you know like so now, now these, this one is mine these are for uh, Will at Project Gaming eight of these I'm gonna keep this set he asked me he sent me a picture of this design so this is what he wanted I only made these as samples to show him what I can do and you know, he said, "Hey, can you throw this the symbol on it instead?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Made a made of these, and I'm gonna keep the two of these. And uh, I don't know. I painted one of them up just to to give you an idea of what they could look like. Uh, I made I, I made the symbol kind of glow, so uh, it's all black based with a uh, black uh, dark gray dry brush and a light gray highlight. And uh, Something like that. I mean, I just I didn't take my time. I kind of just did it really quick. I was bored. Needed a break from doing stuff, so I paint stuff when I need breaks from other stuff and whatnot. All right, that's uh the quick and dirty uh how I make my detail work for some of the things where for my uh you know. These corners, same and stuff, you know, same deal. I basically, you would just, you know, uh, I just cut out little squares. You know, I measure them out, of course, and I rip them off on my bandsaw, so they're all the, the same size. But I'm just gonna show you really quick what I do. Okay, I want these corner uh, metal support looking things here, so here's my square. And kind of just cut down like that, flip it over, cut like that, pulls that piece out, there you have this little corner here. And uh, then I would just uh, like this, like this. And seeing that these are on an angle, I'll angle the bottoms just a hair. And there you go. One of these little corner pieces that would fit on the bottom. Like so. I mean, of course, that was a lot dinkier, but whatever. All right. Now that I'm done with that. I will. What am I doing? Oh, show you the little how to bit on um, the dungeon stuff. Dungeon stuff. All right. Let's start with the modular, the modular wall. Uh, well, let me. Uh, All right. Okay. Take your ruler. This is a. Uh, if you want to make these, the modular way, like the nice way, uh, they can do whatever you want. See that the board, like I told you, is nine sixteenths of an inch. You uh, want to add that for your half bricks, so that when it lines up on the corners, they'll fit nicely. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Uh, yes, so, all right, first you want to do, okay, I, I make my walls two and a half inches tall. Some people make their walls two inches tall. Um, I do the two and a half because I like my door openings two inches, so. Plus, I like having a little more room, and this way I can use the same wall pieces for dungeons or my buildings. I use it for my buildings that that height makes it a lot more easier for uh, to maneuver around inside them. Okay, score this. Score this. 
I mean, I think I've had another tutorial showing how I did this also, but but this is going to be all in one for those that that, that want to know. Okay, now I'm going to do the bricks that are one inch long, seeing that the top, bottom, and middle are, are the same, I just measure that out. And I like using this the pencil. I mean, they score nice. And I just poke a little hole in the spots I need, and then draw over it. Okay, finish up this second tier. Now imagine making a whole set this way. Yeah, I did it. And gave it all away as a prize. Took me a while though. Uh, he said he'd like to have it painted, so I painted it all for him also. I haven't made another dungeon set since. I haven't really had the time. But that is the only dungeon set that I have made. Modular dungeon set. Uh, Okay, there's all your bricks drawn out. Okay, next thing you do, just take your X-Acto knife, and uh, don't mind kids in the background, my God. You just score through all your lines. Well, I'm not doing a good job. I'm taking my time, but just roughly, you know, this is what I do. So. scored it all like I do with everything else my pen I'll run that pen through to give it that nice deep that nice uh, grout line okay the next step to make it modular. I mean, this is modular too. I mean, you could just glue two together, whatever. But to make it really nice, I normally use the bandsaw for this, but I'm just going to use the exacto knife because I don't want to get up. These, these half bricks, I'm going to cut them all out. I normally do the end. When I do it, I, I'll put the detail, the brick detail, on both sides of the board. That way, you can either side you're on, you'll see the the detail of the brick and this is this, this these boards of course are scrapped they're not sanded down so they're still shiny clear coats and okay, there you go and clean them up a little bit um, out there you go boom and I have a second one here I did earlier and no I didn't cut them out perfectly with but you know if you have a bandsaw or something you can do your measurements and do a lot nicer you can see the little gaps here by doing it with the exacto knife I mean I could have took my time but I didn't you know this, well this this one actually fits a little better that way but uh you know, and there you go, like so. There you go. Modular walls. Now, if you have some extra cash, I will make these for you. But I would rather not make these for you. 
<laughs> instead, you can get a lot of these pieces done quick, more professionally, you know, will fit perfectly, every, every piece will fit perfectly together, and uh, will look pristine. Um, if you just go to modestmagic.com, his dungeon sets are awesome. I mean, he gives you a lot, a lot of walls for your money. You want the the flooring? You can get those sheets of those. Uh, huge castle door openings and whatnot. His, I believe, are two inches tall. So I guess that's the difference between his and mine. And I might all hand carved. His is all machined and machined. You know, but, you know, whatever. Anyways. This right here takes a lot to long time to do both sides. You know, I mean, hey, if you want it not painted, I can rip them out quick. Um, but I do suggest if you're looking to get a dungeon set, you go through Modest Magic because uh, he'll give you a great deal and a crap load of pieces and at a cheap price. I mean, I consider it a cheap price. It's a good deal. So check him out if you're looking for some castles or wall stuff, or dungeon wall stuff. Uh, I'll show you how I do my flooring. He's got those two. But I'll just give you a quick how I did my... Uh, this piece of... Beat up. Uh, I'll just use this side here. Alright, I'm just going to do a little quick little thing here. I'm going to measure over... Uh, I'm gonna measure over an inch, just uh, okay. And I want my area that I'll be using four inches wide. So okay, and it's gonna be three quarters of an inch away from the edge of the board because I'm going to put a little little couple steps in there. So there's my three quarters. Two, three, four. It's just doing a little square block here. Three quarters. One, two, three, four. Um, hmm. You made that line a little too long. Alright, it's okay. Okay. Draw it like so. Now I'm going to carve in all the four squares. Now, if you saw that video of that dungeon I made, I did this to the entire floor. All of it. All that flooring was done in this manner. Of course, with a bigger measuring stick. Okay. okay, there you go. Carved out like a section, four by four section here. Okay, and what I forgot to do was mark where I was going to put my stairs. So I'm saying like a two inch wide stairs. Each step is going to be a quarter of an inch, roughly, for these steps. They're not for people to stand on, not for miniatures to stand on. They're just for shoe. Okay. There you go. Now for the steps, what I do is I take my exacto and I start down to where I think the top of that first step should be, and I'll stop. Because you don't want to cut all the way through the board. 
and then I will cut sideways and then we're cut like this I mean holding it on the sideways but. Okay. and now I'm going to score the top here One step ready. There's your basic through tier stair. Easily done. Okay, I'm going to commence scoring out all this. So, all right, go back and get a drink. All right, sorry about that. Couldn't find my Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew. Ah, the drink of gaming kings. All right, I scored all that out. Now, I'm going to do some little, I guess my cobble type stone is all free handed. So I'll just start with this, this first brick here. And I tried not to make all my bricks, you know, the same, the same size, of course. that yeah right there okay and then you take your pen and just like you do with everything else just run it through there imagine doing this through a whole dungeon wow yeah I'm glad I didn't I'm not gonna do that again I mean in that scale of it, that was just ridiculous all right let me score the rest of the floor here just so we can see it better. Now everywhere there was a walkway. I was I would carve this so these two ropes, I would carve that all the way up. There you go. Quick and dirty cobblestone. Sand this down with some hundred grit paper, give it a nice texture. That's how you get the, how I did that dungeon. So, you can take a couple of these walls. Just, you can just match it. There you go. 
So, but if you choose not to want to make all this stuff yourself and you want it to look really nice and machined, you get all the floor tiles, wall sections, you know, doorways, windows, all kinds of stuff. Go to Miles Magic. He'll go hook you up with a lot of dungeon stuff. I mean, if, if, if you like, you know, you can commission me to, I will make them myself also. But he has the means to get it to you faster and probably cheaper because it's going to take me a lot longer to do this stuff by hand than, than he can with his machine, which <clears throat> drives my cost up a little bit just because of the, the time it's going to take me. So that's it. Throw all the stuff here. There's that. There's this. There's those. There's those. There's, there's those. You know. There you go. Um, oh, I also said I'd show you how to do those uh, railings really quick. Just grab some scrap for the the borders. Couple of scrap pieces of foam here. All right. Just trying to get the. A uniform size here. Okay. I normally have these all measured out and I rip them out of my bandsaw. This one will be the end. This one's a square. It'll be the corners. For the corners, I'll go like this so that, you know, now these butt out. See how, oh, like that, like that. To put just a little detail into this, I'll score a couple lines across on the top and then on the outside sides where the, the piping or whatever you want to call it would come in and you, you know, run that pen through there again there's a little corner piece and you did such a great job there's a little detail on the side there both sides and let's do this one really quick. Just to give you guys an idea. Scraps. Alright. There you go. There's two of them. And uh, more scraps. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> All right, whatever scrap pieces. There you go. Just quickly done, like so. You well, know, got on both sides. So, uh, then you know, make them nicer, of course, and you just glue all that stuff together. And it makes for a nice little little border around a board. Uh, now, just to, to spice that up just a little bit to give it just that little extra. Mm -hmm. Looking nice, looking nice. I'll, I'll put some kind of extra trim pieces on. Okay, what you do is like I'll have a bunch of these, and I'll I'll make what I'm making out of extra ones of these that I've cut out. So I will cut down, you like kind of like how I made those corners for the those big uh, those things with the symbols on them. But this will have three sides instead of this the two. See if I can pull that out. All right. So you get something like that. Okay. And then I'll set it down 
and I'll just cut a few of them out, just go like this, make them about an eighth of an inch. Well, I had a bunch of them, you know, and I'm, they're all gonna, they would fit what I've already cut out, but you, know, you may have to trim up the legs a little bit. But you would then glue these on. So, so, so every so often, oops, I just broke that one. No, whatever, you guys get the point though. Let me, let me see here. All right. And once you glue everything together, it's nice and solid. But you know, as by themselves, these pieces are kind of gimp. But there you go. Nice border. Um, just a little bit of carving work, you know, once it's all glued together, it, it's pretty solid. So, there's that tutorial. I uh, hope you all enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you have any more questions, anything else you'd like to see, please let me know. Uh, if you guys have, if anybody has any uh, work they'd like done, uh, you, can, you can visit my website, highlandterrain.com, or send me a message here on YouTube, and I'll get back to you. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I work with whatever your budget is, you know, what you want to spend. Um, uh, you know, we'll discuss what you want done via uh, Google Hangouts, uh, via phone, via email, whichever way you're more comfortable with communicating. Uh, we can do that. Uh, so, until next time, everyone, thanks.